Thank you for joining us today. I'm Joseph Owen, and we will be discussing peripherally inserted central venous catheters in neonates. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to recognize the ideal and suboptimal locations for peripheral venous catheter insertion, and also be able to describe some of the common complications that can arise from a malpositioned catheter. So why do we use a peripherally inserted central venous catheter? In prior screencasts, we've talked about umbilical venous catheters and umbilical arterial catheters. Well, a peripherally inserted central venous catheter has some advantages over an umbilical venous catheter and has great advantages over just a peripheral IV. This peripherally inserted central venous catheter typically terminates in the superior or the inferior cavoatrial junction in regions of high blood flow. And this allows for administration of medications that are known to be associated with phlebitis in peripheral IVs. It allows for fluid and electrolyte administration and nutrition. So a lot of similar things to an umbilical venous catheter. But one advantage is a peripherally inserted central venous catheter can be in place and be used for many months. Where an umbilical venous catheter is really limited to sort of the first two weeks of life. Some people would even say the first 10 days of life. So often an umbilical venous catheter will be placed in a neonate on day of life zero. But as soon as feasible, a peripherally inserted central venous catheter will be placed to provide more long-term access with lower complication rates than an umbilical venous catheter. So where do we put it? Well, unlike umbilical venous catheters and arterial catheters, which are all gonna be inserted through the umbilicus, a peripherally inserted central venous catheter can be inserted into one of the large veins of the upper extremity or one of the large veins of the lower extremity. And then we want that catheter to terminate ideally in the superior or inferior vena cava at the cavoatrial junction, but it is a little more flexible than some of our other catheters in that it is acceptable to leave the catheter in a central vein as long as the catheter is oriented the correct way. So let's take a look at some of these insertions. In this case, we have a premature infant who was 34 weeks, six days, whose course has been complicated by respiratory distress syndrome. We have a number of catheters in place, including gastric catheter, an umbilical arterial catheter in appropriate position, and an umbilical venous catheter that is terminating along that inferior margin of the liver. So that umbilical venous catheter is low and it hasn't been functioning appropriately. And so the team needs to establish better new central venous access. So a peripherally inserted central venous catheter was placed through the left lower extremity. The peripherally inserted central venous catheters are not quite as dense as the umbilical venous and umbilical arterial catheters. So unlike the umbilical venous and umbilical artery catheter, the gastric catheter, which have a thin barium strip, the PIC catheters typically are impregnated with barium so that the entire catheter is slightly dense, but not as dense as the other catheters. So this is that peripherally inserted central venous catheter coming from that left lower extremity, okay, into the common iliac vein to the confluence with the IVC. It's coursing again up the right abdomen, this time within the IVC, right? So it's behind the liver, okay, right to that cavoatrial junction. Again, our cavoatrial junction inferiorly is presumed to be at the level of the diaphragm. So if I take away my red line, we can see this faint catheter coursing up, terminating in expected location at that inferior cavoatrial junction. Here we have another case, a very premature infant, 29 week today, now on day of life five, they're wanting to replace the umbilical venous catheter. Okay, it is appropriately positioned right here, so that's our umbilical venous catheter, but as the infant matures and they want more long-term central venous access, they have placed a catheter from the right lower extremity, again, coursing up the expected location of the common iliac vein, IVC, and then into the atrium. Now, you can see this is the terminus of the catheter here, right? If we went and drew our diaphragm, uh, we would see that the diaphragm's sitting right around here. Okay, so that's a little high in the right atrium. And um, ideally, you want that pick right at the inferior cavoatrial junction. Here, they've retracted the catheter. Again, we see it coursing from the right extremity to the right of midline in the IVC and terminating right at that diaphragm. So nicely positioned. And now that they have that pick line in place, they likely will go ahead and remove that umbilical venous catheter as they have good central access through the peripherally inserted central venous catheter, which can be in place, assuming there's no complications for up to three months. Here's another case. This one's a little bit different. Um, so not really a neonatal 
baby, but a, a baby who was premature, a 33-week baby, presenting at uh, three months of life with sepsis. And they're having a very difficult time getting an IV, a peripheral IV, in this septic baby. So they attempted to place a peripherally inserted central venous catheter. This is our catheter here, okay? So it's coming from that right upper extremity, so a right upper extremity insertion. But if you look for the course of this catheter, we can see that it is not correct. So this catheter courses here, and then where you'd expect it to turn down to the inferior cavoatrial junction, somewhere right around there. So this would be sort of the optimal position. We don't actually see that. What we see instead is that catheter courses here and then turns up into the jugular vein, okay? So now anything that you infuse through that catheter is going to be flowing in a retrograde fashion to the way the blood is flowing within the vein, right? And so by if you, if you administer medication or fluid or nutrition in a retrograde fashion, you risk thrombosis of the internal jugular vein. So that's a malposition catheter, should not be used, and really needs to be replaced. Despite multiple attempts to reposition that catheter, they were unsuccessful, and the patient went to interventional radiology. Interventional radiology removed the pre-existing catheter and then placed another catheter with a right upper extremity insertion. So it's going through the axillary vein, the subclavian vein, into the superior vena cava. Now, ideal positioning is at the superior cavoatrial junction, okay? That superior cavoatrial junction is often about one to one and a half vertebral bodies below the carina, okay? So there, there's some of our reference points, the carina there. Superior cavoatrial junction. But notice this catheter actually goes pretty far deep, okay? So we can see that the terminus of this catheter is deep within the right atrium, even possibly at the tricuspid valve, okay? So possibly within that right ventricle. And that's really too deep, needs to be retracted. Again, optimal positioning at the superior cavoatrial junction, somewhere right around the, the, this level, about one or two vertebral bodies below the carina. Here we have another premature infant. The day of life five, they need central venous access. And there are a number of different catheters um, that are illustrative on this particular patient. So one of the catheters that we see is over here in the right upper extremity. We can see that they probably had sort of a lower insertion, maybe in the forearm or the antecubital fossa. And that catheter courses up right here and terminates right there. So for whatever reason, they were not able to get that catheter to advance. That catheter is located likely within that axillary vein. It is okay to use for some medications and some fluid, um, but it's, it's suboptimal due to just the lower flow, the less central location of the axillary vein, but it can be used um, sort of in an emergency or used uh, in a more conservative or sparing fashion. The other catheter we see, okay, because this one was not well placed, is uh, here from a left lower extremity insertion. This catheter courses up through the common iliac vein to the IVC, and now it looks like it's going to be okay, but it actually takes this turn and kind of folds back upon itself. So if I remove my line, take a look at that, you can see how this catheter is kind of looped back on itself. Again, that's suboptimal. That means anything that you administer is going to be flowing in a retrograde manner relative to the expected flow of the venous blood, right? The venous blood is flowing this way toward the heart, right? So anything you administer through that catheter is going to flow retrograde, putting the patient at risk for phlebitis or thrombophlebitis. So we don't want to use that catheter and it is going to be need to be repositioned. You can see this is the same patient. They've now adjusted the catheter. We can see that that catheter now comes from that left lower extremity, takes a very similar course, but it no longer has that loop in it and it terminates nicely right here at the level of the diaphragm. So a nice left lower extremity pick terminating at the cavoatrial junction. Notice that they have not removed or changed the position of this because they were having difficulty with that catheter, but they did leave it in place for emergency access. Peripherally inserted central venous catheters are associated with a number of complications. One of the most severe complications is a central line associated bloodstream infection. And those types of infections can result in sepsis, bacteremia, and uh, it's very important to use appropriate sterile technique when placing peripherally inserted central venous catheters. One of the most common complications is phlebitis. Phlebitis typically occurs within the vein that the PICC line is inserted into. So the presence of that catheter in a relatively small peripheral vein can irritate the endothelial lining, can cause thrombus and, and thrombophlebitis of the vessel. So you can get sort of a hard, painful, inflamed vessel. <clears throat> Sometimes peripherally inserted central venous catheters will have some leakage around the insertion site. Perforation is a complication. So perforation of a vessel or perforation of an atrium or the ventricle can occur, typically occurs during insertion and is more related to the guide wire used to place the catheter as opposed to the presence of the catheter itself. 
Catheters over time can also develop fibrin sheaths and clot associated with the catheter, and that can lead to thrombosis of the vessel. So not just phlebitis in per peripheral vessels, but over long term can cause stenosis and narrowing of central vessels. Although this is more common in adults than it is in children. In summary, we want to insert the catheter either through the upper or lower extremity. The tip should terminate at the superior or inferior caboatrial junction. And when appropriately positioned, pick can be used for long-term administration of fluids, medication, and nutrition, so up to three months. And you want to make sure that you are monitoring your patients for bloodstream infections, which can occur due to placement under non-optimal conditions. And you want to monitor for phlebitis in those peripheral vessels at the site of insertion, where that catheter can lead to thrombosis and inflammation. Here are a number of references that talk about UVC catheters versus PICs, and also an article that talks about common complications and risk factors for complications in neonatal PIC usage. I hope you found this session to be informative, and I hope you will take the time to review the other sessions on umbilical venous catheters and umbilical arterial catheters and endotracheal tubes in neonatal patients. Thank you for your time.